it's starting. And you're on. Okay. Do you get that little card holder? It's on mine. Fans. We're about ready to get started. Thank you, honey. Thank you, thank you. Looks like one is on. <gasps> hey, friends. I want to see. Let me see your comments. I want to see your. Carlene is here. Hey! It's so nice to see you here. Thank you for showing up. Well, it looks like there are four of you here. So if you are, oh, dude, I just got, I just hit the wrong button. I won't, if you'll fix it for me, I won't ever touch that button again. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all, I messed up. So I want to see the comments and know who's here so I can say hi to you and give you a shout out and the thank you for being here. And of course, me, he hands me his phone. Because he's using mine to video or to do the live thing. Pat, Pat True. Okay. And he hands it to me. And what do I do? I touch a button and then it disappears. So, gosh. You know, having a tech live in your house is a wonderful thing. But I will tell you. <laughs> I would get tired of me. Just saying. Okay. Oh, hey, Pat. Hey, Linda. Oh, so, so happy y'all are here. Just so happy. Okay, it's Monday again. Can you believe it goes so fast? I got here today and I was like, what just happened? We just had a Monday, it seems. So I was thinking all day about what I was going to do and then I planned something and at the last minute I switched it. <laughs> it's no wonder my poor husband um, feels mistreated, I'm sure. I'm sorry, honey. So, hey, Janice, we're glad you're here, too. Oh, so happy y'all are here. Maurice is here. Maurice is here. Oh, yay. Okay, so let me tell you what we're going to do tonight. Um, I am working on another of my orange peel picture, <coughs> excuse me, picture windows reverse applique tool. We're working with that tonight, and uh, when I... First got my prototype, I started working on this little quilt that's um, in the design process. I know y'all must do this too when you're thinking about a quilt and you're going to have it this way and do I want this and do I want that. And so I pulled some fabric that was um, just fabric and um, started working on it. So that's what's behind me and we're going to talk about that. Um... We are, I taught a four patch class to some um, new and experienced quilters on Saturday and we had so much fun and I thought I would just review real quickly. I mean, it was a, it was an all day thing. Was it nine patch? What did I say? Because you said four patch. So that was really okay, well, I'll show you in a few minutes. It is a nine patch. He's correcting me. It was a nine patch and so today I'm going to show you um, a little bit of that just to give you some hints and tips if you haven't made a nine patch lately. Oh, hey, Mindy and hey, Catherine. Ooh, I'm so happy you're here. Um, anybody who comes in, we'd love to just give us a shout out and, I'll, and I will say hey, hi. I will try to say hi right back to you. I've got a phone sitting here. Okay, and then after we do the um, nine patch thing, then we um, have started ending with um, just a little writing that I have done um, in the last year or so, kind of a devotional. So uh, let's get started. First of all, it's Monday. I hope you have had a marvelous Monday. Um, again, know that each one of you specifically has been prayed for. I ask for blessings and whatever it is you need in your life. I ask the Lord to uh, bring that to you. Um, for whatever situation you're in or whatever you need from him, that he would make his presence known to you. And I ask that, um, I ask that again now. So know that you've been prayed over today. And thank you for being here. So let's talk about what's on the wall behind me. Now these are glued together but unstitched. I have only one of these that is stitched together. And this is the orange peel quilt. Um, I showed y'all last week 
this orange peel quilt. I made the back and it goes on the machine tomorrow. Um, this is my long arm that it, we're sitting on and I'm on the back side of it. And there usually is a pull right here. You may notice it's not here. We figured out a way to remove it. So Doug took it, I don't know where he took it. He took it in the far end of the house. And um, then we'll put it back on so I can quilt tomorrow. Um, if I'm quilting, we can't remove it, obviously. But this is the orange peel quilt I showed you last week. For those of you, um, all of you, I hope you've seen this. It goes on the machine tomorrow. And this is a uh, Maywood fabric line. And the designer is Monique Jacobs. And it's just a really luscious line. And she's got a new line that's very similar to this called Flowers and Vibes, I think is what it is. So look for that in your local quilt shops because she does beautiful, beautiful, um, she chooses beautiful colors and um, her drawings and her fabric, they're just luscious. They're just luscious. So I will always be happy and honored to use hers. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carlene. Hey, Amanda. So, um, yeah, um, Monique just does some beautiful Monique Jacobs made with fabrics. That line is called Amore. So, um, I really like that line. It is, it's, it's quite beautiful. Um, and I'm a purple girl, so, um, I don't have a lot of purple in my life. And I guess what I mean by that is I don't decorate in purple and I don't, you know, but if I, but I'm drawn to purple. So a phone cover, I'll do purple if that's a choice. Um, I like, I like purple. I like purple a lot. Um, purples and blues and scarlets, just send me. Okay, so we're going to talk about this little quilt that I started. So it's the exact same um, tool and it's the exact same uh, block and all of that, but I'm going to show you how we do it. So I'm going to actually do a, a, a demo for you. What This came from yardage, and I cut with the fabric, 10 inches with the fabric, and, you know, just 10 inches across, and then subcut that. I can get four blocks out of one with the fabric. And so for this quilt, I have 16 blocks uh, ready to stitch, and I can, um, the rearranging of these is really interesting. But what I have found is like, um, my favorite size so far is the six across and six rows, like six blocks across. So that's 36 blocks. And right here, I only have the four by four. So this is the 16, two. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So I need to make 20 more blocks. So um, y'all are in for helping me tonight. You just didn't even know it. So you can also use layer cakes. Remember that because layer cakes are the, or, you know, that's a, that's a copyrighted term, but layer cakes are the 10 by 10, pre-cut 10 by 10 inch. So can you see what I did? I cut my fabric 10 inches by 10 inches, and then I just lay the tool right down on top of it. See that? So this is how you do all of my tools. It doesn't matter the shape or the size or anything. This is the way reverse applique works. Okay, so I take a friction pin, and you'll notice I'm working from the back. Two reasons for that. On dark fabric particularly, you will have a lighter... Uh, back. So I can use whatever color pin, right, that I that I want. It doesn't matter. As long, all that matters is that I can see it. Okay. Is that visible on camera? The line is barely visible. Okay. There's a line right here, y'all. You see, and I just, I just used the tool to mark the line. Okay. I'm looking around like I don't know where anything is, but I know where everything is. Okay, so I use this little bitty, uh, what size is this? 28, 28 millimeter uh, tool. I have two of them. They use the same blade, um, 
and I have no preference. I mean, it's not like I like one over the other. What I like is a sharp blade. Okay, here's the end game. We see this hole. Do you see how I folded this back? That's what we have to do here. So to do that, I am going, here's the line. I am going to cut at least a quarter of an inch on the inside because I must be able to fold this back, right? So that makes a clean edge on the front. So I have to give myself that space. So I cut, there you go, right? Super simple. Now I'm going to reuse this, this piece. Do you see right here? That little piece? Do that again. This piece right here, this is what's going to go in behind it. So I'm going to save this. This is not scrap. It is, it, I will end up using it. Um, honey, right there on my uh, table are scissors. I forgot little scissors. I'm sorry, but thank you. Okay, friends, what I have to do is I have to snip to the corner on both points, right? Oh, these scissors don't work. Try another pair. There's some with green. These are thread um, snipper scissors. Okay, sorry, y'all. Okay, perfect. These work so much better. Okay, I am snipping. You see how quickly this goes? About every, I would say maybe an inch. And I just lay it. Y'all, I've done this so many times now. I promise this is the fastest way. If I lift it up, then I'm fighting a limp piece of fabric. And it's no fun. So I just... It can be half an inch, it can be a quarter of an inch between snips, but I don't go much over an inch at the most because I want this, now I have to fold all this back, right, to get it to look like this. Now, I don't want glue on my cutting mat, so I put a piece of paper, any paper, on the, you know, to protect it on any mat. I don't want glue on any mat. Okay, good. Amanda could see it. Okay, my next tool in my little uh, tool case is um, Elmer's washable um, school glue, and it's this purple disappearing kind. Um, they sell it, you know, of course, in the kids' school department. That season is kind of over. Um, but they didn't sell many school supplies this year. It was weird. Um, now, did y'all see what I, I'm, I'm, I'm showing you and I'm talking? I ran a bead of lipstick. That's what I call it. And look, do you see how I'm just laying that back? I'm just finger pressing that down. Do you see that? Now, I'm not. That's just a temporary thing. I'm going to... Um, Finish that in a minute. I just run right along that line that I drew. I just put this little bead of... Y'all, this is washable glue. If kindergartners can eat this, it's not going to hurt my fabric. I've been using it for years. It just does not hurt. Now, I do a couple of these near the point. Um, and if it doesn't hold, I'll go back and really, you know, give it a, and then I just run my finger along it and fold it back. Now, I always have my iron nearby when I'm doing this. Y'all know at night I sit in my recliner and we watch the news or movies or television or whatever we're doing in the evenings. And I always work on handwork, and I consider this part handwork. So at night I do this, and I have a little iron. That little iron that I got, or Doug bought me, and it was at Walmart, and it was like $12.99, and it's about as big as my hand. That's the one I have. <laughs> I have an iron always in there in case I need it, just kind of plugged in. Okay, 
Do you see what just happened? Look how beautiful and finished that is, right? But that's just held with glue, so it's certainly not permanent. Okay, the next step is I have to fill this window. Well, I pre-cut, here it is, um, a piece of the green to go in here. Now, because it's going in here, um, I'm just going to lay this like so. And I am going to lay this on top of it to get it. But look what I'm doing. Whoops. Do you see how there's extra? Like outside of here. It's, I, can't, I don't know if you're seeing it yeah. or not. But okay. There you are. Uh, hey, Connie. Well, yeah, come back anytime and watch. Hey, Sharon, super good to see you. Okay, you see that? So this piece that I cut is, um, I forgot what I cut it. Oh, I cut it six inches wide and I cut it 12 inches long and I lay it like this. But what I'm going to do is I know that that's going to fit perfectly. I'm going to glue this together. But I have to have my... So glue is just a temporary fix, right? It's going to get me over to, it's going to get me over to the um, sewing machine. All right, same thing. I'm just going to lay this and I'm going to tap that down. And I'm going to lift it up to make sure that I have plenty of allowance around it. So maybe it'd be better if I did it from the back there. Huh. There. Okay, so I'm just finger pressing it. See that? I'm going to trim all that excess off later. The main thing is to get coverage in your window and that size it's six inches wide and about 12 inches long okay the very next step I would do is I would go top stitch at the sewing machine all the way around here and in this case I would use black thread just to hide it so that's what I did here you probably can't even see the black thread. Oh, turn it over, though. Here's the black thread. Once I have that sewn down, I'll fix my walls. Once I have that sewn down, I will do the next step. Now, the next step, the reason I, the reason I sew that down is so that it won't slip. But I will tell you, I have done this before um, I stitched around. I've just found that it works better, but in this case, I won't just because. Did you see what I did? This is the window that fits inside of here. And what I just did was I made the smaller window because we're working on this piece. So I laid it in the opening, you know, and just adjusted it till it's, um, you know, till it's done. Then I draw the shape. Same response, same exact. I cut the green. Now, you know, you don't have to do this little this little window you don't have to do. I showed you a quilt last week that is um, that was blue and it had um, uh, what are those things called? Um, Y'all help me. What did I call it? They were it was stitched. It was pieced and it was um, the window itself was pieced strings. That's what I'm trying to think of. Strings. It was strings. 
and so I didn't open this center window. All right. Again, I'm just cutting, you know, less than an inch, more than probably half an inch. Then I do the same thing. I glue this down. I run a bead of glue, and I always glue on the back. Normally, I draw on the back, but for this little inner window, I have to adjust the tool to fit perfectly. All right, I'm at the wrong angle. Let me start here. I always start on the bottom right and work away from me. When I first started doing it, well, I've done it a million ways, but when I first started doing it, I was doing one by one. Then I figured out this little helpful hint that you can lay them all back in one swell hoop, as they say. Okay, look y'all. Now I have an inner window. So now I iron that down. So you know that if you use glue on your fabric, if you heat it, then it melts and disperses. And um, once it cools, it does not gum up your machine. So now I've got this hole. I've got to fill this. This is what came out of the original center. I can lay that down and because I've got room, right, I can, you know, kind of wiggle it until I get it like I want it. Let's say that's how I want it. Flip it over. Glue it down. Go to the machine. Once I go to the machine, then I stitch, look at that, I'll glue this, I mean I'll hit this with a iron so it'll hold. Got it? Okay, now once I, go, I'm going to use this again. Once I go to the machine, the way I do it is production work, right? So I do um, I'll have a stack, I'll have all these black ones done, and I'll go all the way around the outside in black. In this case, I'll do it in black. In this case, I did it in purple. And in this case, I did it in a soft, um, a real soft purple that almost had a gray tone to it to match. So I want the stitching to disappear. Um because that's my preference, but you don't always have to have it disappear. And then around this one, so you stitch around the outside, excuse me, I have the hiccups, and the inner window, and that is a finished block. And then look what I did. Do you see how I trimmed from the back all this off? Once it's stitched down, I can see the stitches, and then I just trim this excess off, like all up in here. See all this will come off. I just trim it. That's what these scissors are good for. So if you don't have any duckbill scissors, it is easy. That's the whole thing, Carlene. It is the easy. <laughs> you have no idea how quick this goes. I mean, you can literally make a whole top, a quilt top, this size in an afternoon. Easy. 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 So um, the, the duckbill scissors are good for this because do you see how it keeps the layers separate the this part the duck part goes against your up lower edge so it just makes it and y'all when I'm doing these I don't cut off the selvages because I just don't let them in the windows but I just let them be part of the thing okay so I'm gonna have a scrap this I'm going to have two scraps this big and a scrap this big, and that's all that's going to be left over, and my block is going to look like this. So how easy is that, right? Super fast, super easy. And it's called reverse applique because the fabric comes in from behind. So when the fabric comes in from behind, normally we do it on top, but this comes in from behind, so that is... The reverse part of it. That's why it's called reverse applique. All right, questions? Does anybody have any questions?
Okay, it is easy. I encourage you to try it. It is so easy. So once you have your 10 inch blocks, however many you're going to do, in this case I had 16, so if this was going to be the end of it, then you have all sorts of um, arranging options. So do you see this center circle right there? If I turn sorry, I'm short. If I turn the corner blocks alone, just the corner blocks, does that look different? Let me see. Yeah. Do you see how that changes the look of it? Yes, I can see it on the... Y'all, I'm telling y'all there are... <laughs> you just can't believe. You can't believe how many different um, options there are. It's like you can draw it out or you, um, you know, from the center. Like, I'm looking at it on the camera going, that's just strange the way that changed the whole focus of it. Um... So it's a lot of fun to play with because it kind of gives that, I think that purple one gives that sort of, um, sort of a, th what is it? Um, optical illusion look, like the center of it is bowing out or something. So anyway, it's a really fun, fun thing to do. So I hope you enjoyed that and I hope that taught you something. And uh, you know, if you ever uh, want one, you do, all you have to do is comment and I'm, I can make sure you get one. Now, one of the things that I've done in, I'm going to sneeze, I feel it. I'm sorry, let me get a drink. Y'all, a cold front's moving in. Did y'all know that? Here it comes. Oh, and do y'all know I love hankies? I love vintage handkerchiefs. And um, I have them hanging on my curtain rods now. I think we showed them to you last week. But look at my cute little hankies. They're everywhere. All over my room. And the weirdest thing, on this one right here, every single morning they have moved. And that one over there, every morning I get up and they're not where I left them. Why is that? Air conditioner. Oh. I'm so... I'm it's, so not, it's not else. <laughs> okay, we don't have gremlins. Okay, because yeah. every morning I get up and go, well, that's the weirdest thing. My hankies are on the little clips. Or, dang it. Oh. They sit there and they wave back and forth. <laughs> Janice, I'd love to send you one. I will, um, I will get with you on that. Okay, so we're going to move to... Um, I want to show you a couple things I did over the weekend. But first... I'm going to show you. I've told y'all about red glasses before. And as I was doing this, I thought, you know, there's something wrong about this layout. I don't quite know what it was. And so I ran over to my sewing machine area and I grabbed my, my red sunglasses. I know they look so weird. But, um, and I looked at the layout and the problem, well, I'm not going to tell you what the problem is. You tell me what the problem is. Doug is going to put the glasses in front of the camera. Move over to me. What? Oh, he wants me to move. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? Is this whole column all dark? Mm -hmm. And this is, this looks lighter. And this is dark. So I think what I need to do. Yeah, isn't that weird? So, um, what I'll do is before I sew it all together, I'll make sure that the, it'll be light, dark, light, dark, and it'll give more contrast. But when I was looking at it, I was like, something's wrong. I don't know what's wrong. And then it dawned on me. I think it's the placement of the light and dark. So I strongly recommend a pair of sunglasses that are red. Leave them in your sewing room. You'd look like a dork if you went to Walmart and I'm just saying, but you can if you want to. But you're going to look funny. Unless you paint your hair red. Or pink. Yes. Okay. Now, let's talk about... I have no... Um, I have no tools for dye patch. I just taught it to some beginners. 
you know, we have a Christian quilt guild, and I love, I don't, do y'all know that I spent my career in training and development? And um, so, what I was showing my friends was this. Everybody, this is a nine patch, or one form of a nine patch, right? Just nine little squares. Now, in this particular layout, I just have two fabrics. Well, you realize that you could have nine fabrics here, right? I mean, you can you can have three fabrics, or two, or three, or four, or five. Um, I even have a little thing over there where I did a whole nine patch all in the same color because... I don't know why I did that, but I was testing something. But anyway, so here's a nine patch. And my beginners thought that the way you did a nine patch was you took nine separate pieces of squares and sewed them together. Well, what, of course, I showed them, and if you're experienced, you already know this. I did strips. Two and a half inch, two and a half inch, two and a half inch. I did three of the pinks. This is some of my hand-dyed fabric. And then um, three strips of the white. And I sewed them together. So here's a two and a half inch strip with my red and then my, right? And then the other three left over, I did, I just um, did this. Then, I feel like y'all already know this, but I'm going to show you just in case, because I don't know who knows what. And if I say something that might help you, that would be awesome. I do, honey, need that ruler. Thank you so much. Um, so, because I cut my strips at two and a half, I'm going to cut the width of this at two and a half. So, I'm going to cut, watch this, two and a half inches wide. I, I do the same. I'm, I am doing the same. Okay. See that? Okay, so this particular one, I'm going to cut one more strip, two and a half inches. Okay. Now, I have my three strip, well, I have more than that. Oh, no, that's my scrap, sorry. Okay, so now I go, I lay them out like I want them, just like so. And I go to my sewing machine. Because they are the same size, they should nest. Um, the Oh, good. Amanda's still learning. Okay. Um, so, do you see? I want these two. Do you see how close those are together? When you have them that close... Called nesting. Now I have to use spit. Mine only nest if I spit. So I line them up like this. I go to my sewing machine and I start down this aisle. I mean this side right here. And I get to here and it's nested and I stop. And then I worry about getting this one all straight. Right? And nested. And I continue on. Then I have this. And then I do the same thing over here. The end result is this. Now, I haven't trimmed this up or, um, but you see, even though I was perfect in my cutting, there's nothing perfect about this. So, what I would do next is I would trim this down to the, to the perfect, so like this is six and a, this should be six and a half inches. Well, right here, it's a little bit more, so I trim it up and have these cute little tails. Um, that square ruler's right there. Let me show y'all how to do this, because I messed up on Saturday and forgot to. to um, so, this is a six and a half inch um, ruler. Do you see how this is a little bit much? Just... By the time you get done, and you do it on all four sides, by the time you get done, you'll have this cute little pile of um, 
you know, like threads. Right? So there's your little pile. And you've got your block. Okay. So that's how you make a nine patch with strips. Super easy. Super fast. Super easy. If you keep cutting and you start putting them together without anything between them. Now, these haven't all been trimmed. But, look, suddenly you have... Do you see what's happening? So you suddenly have this great checkerboard look. And it can be really attractive, right? It can be really, really fun. Or you can spread it apart and put fabric in between. You know, there's all kinds of options that you can do. Now, another thing you can do is, you know those little squares we talked about? If you, this is called, if you, on the corners and in the center, I put blue, but I put this as a half square triangle. Have y'all ever made a half square triangle? You take two squares and you um, stitch from corner to corner. I've got this stapled down, so I'll just unstaple it so I can show you. If I took two squares of fabric and laid them face to face and then stitched from corner to corner and trimmed the excess off and opened it up, it'd be just like this. See that? Now look at this block. If I were to slide all these together, that is a churn dash. It's called a churn dash. But it's still a nine patch. Super simple, super easy, super fast. Really, really cute. So it's fun to make. You can do the same thing. Thank you. I did this, y'all, when I got home from the class to staple it so I'd have it all back together when I thank you, honey, when I did it again. Now, look at this one though. Do you see this half square triangle on the corners? This makes sort of a circle if they were all compacted together. Whereas this one, I turned the corners on the inside. So isn't that fun? So that's another quick block. If you shrunk all those and put them all together, you would um, have another little block. Now another thing you can do is all nine patches don't have to be squares. They can be uh, more like this. You can do long sides and a big center. So there's just a million different ways you can do nine patches. But now, and I'm not really doing a tutorial, I'm just letting y'all know that there are some fun things you can do. All right, I'm going to use, here's my original nine patches, right? If you want to do what's called a disappearing nine patch, you would cut your block horizontally and vertically. So let me show you what that looks like. These are um, two and a half inches, but there's only two inches showing because I've taken the right seams and stuff. So one inch is halfway across. So I'm going to line this up along my seam or along this seam. Just like so, I take my handy dandy little rotary tool and I'm not, all I'm going to do is lift my ruler, just leave it there like that. Then I'm going to do the same thing and measure one inch from this seam or this seam, doesn't matter, but this one's easier for me. And I'm going to cut across. Okay, so here's my original. It looked just like this, right? So now I have a four patch. Now I get to play. Watch what happens when I turn this in and this in and I slide them all back together. Look, isn't that cool? Do y'all like that? Um, Is this... 
is that fun? Okay, so that's not, I just love that block. So that's a fun block, but what, so I switched these two corners, just turned them, right? Now watch what happens if I flip these corners. Look what, look at that. It's a totally different block. Now I'm going to put these back, and I'm going to say, what if you, um, just, so here's where I get, Here's where we started. <laughs> I always have to start over because the whole switching things around. This is where we started. I'm using this as my guide. This is where we started. Okay. If I turn this one to the right and this one to the right and this one to the right and this one to the right, look what happens. Isn't that cool? If I start in this thing, if I turn this one to the right and this one to the right is that what i want to do well let's see what that looks like so that makes a whole string across anyway you get to play with however you want to put your squares back together and there are literally dozens and dozens of ways um and we did this saturday and had so much fun trying to figure out which way we were going to put them together so that's that's one version of a disappearing nine patch. Any questions on that? Amanda likes it. Yay! Amanda is so much fun. Oh, by the way, of course I have to start again. When you sew all these back together, if I flip this one over and I flip this one over, let's just call this one, this is pretend like this is our block. What I would do is I would sew this seam together, right? I'd just flip this over, run that through the machine, and then this would be a row. And then I would do the same thing here, stitch here. Then I would have a second row and it'd all be stitched together. And then I would stitch this to this. And that would be my finished block. Okay? So you're just going to put them together like that. Okay, so that's one way to make a disappearing nine patch. Another way to make a disappearing nine patch is, um, am I out of time? Is that why you're looking at the clock? No. Okay. The next way to, can you give me an idea? Okay. So the next way to do it is to cut, do you see this corner to corner? Okay. So I'm going to do that for you just so you'll know. All right. And I'm using this block as my, like, whatever. When I cut it corner to corner, I tend to line my points up on the grid on that you know my cutting board just so I'll have that as a secondary I just line this up corner to corner okay I think I was off a little bit but it won't matter demonstrations going a little too this uh, is a little higher than I'm normally cutting Okay, do you see what just happened? I cut it this direction. Now, you have all kinds of options. You can make smaller blocks. You can, um, you can take this and add it to another block. Oh my word, y'all. You just get to experiment all you want. You can, if these were scrappy, these all went to the center, right? If this was scrappy and more than two colors, you could switch it around, you know, like flip these two. But it, will, it won't matter on a two color, but you can switch it up a lot. So that's another way to do a nine patch, um, disappearing nine patch. So that is fun, especially if you have more colors. On a two color, it's not as much. And then there's a third way to do it. Disappearing nine patch. I'm looking for the piece of paper that has my drawing on it. Here it is. Okay. <clears throat> Look at this one. You can cut from the center to the center and just have that corner. So on this block, it's not going to make any difference because it's two color, but if I had five colors, for example, 
if I was doing this or some other one, and I cut the corners off and switched them around, that would be a cool block too. So don't be afraid to sew fabric together and then cut it up and then sew it back together. That is a whole lot of what if we do this and what happens when. Okay, thank you, Carlene. It's so much fun. And Renee, I'm so glad you're learning something. And um, I'm telling y'all, nine patches are um, uh, you know, next week I'll bring a quilt I made. I made three exact, uh, exactly alike quilts for me and two B BFFs. And um, it was a nine patch with a um, alternating with a a block that had snowballs on the corner. One of my, it's one of my, literally one of my favorite quilts ever, and it's nine patch. It's super fast and super easy, and it turned out real cute. I'll bring that next week. Um, and when I say I, I'll bring that, I'll go to the my house. I mean, it's in my living room. I'll bring it from the living room into the studio. It's not like I have to go anywhere. Okay, so we are um, to the point of the um, hour where it um, I'm gonna I write ever I've told y'all this you're always welcome to join me um, in um, we are called to pray as a Facebook group and um, I'm gonna show y'all something I just saw a tip that I needed to remind you of do you see here how this seam has been pressed to the darker side right there? You see that? I folded my white, the seam. If I did the reverse of that, let me see if I can quickly iron this the wrong way. So in quilting, we always, generally, not always, there's nothing always, we most often press to the dark side. And here's why. How's the best way for me to demonstrate this, Doug? Lay it, just lay it down. Oh, I don't know. All right, put your camera. Can y'all see the white shadow back there? Behind, can you see that shadow from here to here? I yeah, can't, it's, it... it's barely. The reason is this will shadow if there is a light behind it. I don't know how to demonstrate that. Got it? Can you see the shadows? Okay. So we always press to the dark side because if it is a dark fabric and a light fabric, you will be able to see the shadow behind it. Okay, Linda saw it. Woohoo! Good. Okay. So that's what I was writing about this day. I'm going to do a devotion, and if this is not your thing, you are welcome to come back next week. We'd love to see you. But I'm going to I'm going to write I'm going to read a little devotion that I wrote. It's called Pressed from Jerry M's Journal. Do you know that I sit in an ironing board to write? I know that's weird, but it's an ironing board right next to my sewing machine, just to the right, just strategically placed at the right angle. I sit in an office chair that swivels so I can turn from the machine to the ironing board to press fabric when I'm sewing, and I iron a lot. Quilters do. I iron every time I sew anything. Do you know that quilters iron the seams after stitching? And you know that we rarely open the seams? We don't. We rarely. Like in garment sewing, I'm taking a time out. We open them. We don't do that in quilting. We always press the seams, almost always, to the dark side. So imagine two 8-inch square pieces of black fabric. One is black, I'm sorry, and one is white. Two pieces of fabric. I sew them together along one side, and at the ironing board, I turn the piece so the back side, the side that I can see, uh, the seam, is facing up. And with the iron, I fold the seam toward the dark side. 
because if I iron it the other way, I pick the, up the piece, I can see it from the front. It's called shadowing. Second scenario, if I iron it toward the black side, the black piece of fabric, you'll never see it. Ironing is the difference. The heat of the iron with a little starter mate, a little steam makes that seam lay really close and flat and that heat and that pressure will cause it to lay in place almost for forever. Well, friends, evil is the same way. If we are stitched together with others who are in the dark, who are not followers of Christ, we can be pressed to move to the dark side. We can be convinced that what we are doing is not so bad. We will feel the heat from the person or the group to conform to their ways. In 2 Corinthians 6.14, it says, do not be yoked together with unbelievers for what do righteousness and wickedness have in common or what fellowship can light have with darkness. Now we can love them and we should and we do. But just like the dark black fabric when joined to the white fabric, we must it must be ironed to one way or the other. In life, we will be pressed to move to the dark side if we are yoked together with someone from the dark. But we will love them, and we will witness to them, to those who are in the dark, because we were in the dark too. Yes, we will love them, and we will help them, and we will do whatever we can to bring them to the light, so that they will see the light. Yoked is like stitched together. Yoked is like being in a close relationship or a business partnership. It is a trap I know far too well, and it hurts. It's painful to extricate yourself from that situation, but back in the light, we humbly ask forgiveness, we repent, and forgiveness is given. God is so good. Freedom from our sins is glorious, and freedom is Christ is the opposite of being pressed and pressured to conform. Freedom in Christ is wanting to submit to his will. The relief is amazing. I trust the Lord. And in 2 Corinthians 6, 16, it says, For we are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will live with them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from them and be separate, says the Lord, Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. And that's what we're to do. Love each other, help each other, but remain clean and separate. So there you go. Thank you all so very much. Hey, and I'm so happy to see you. Um, thank you so much for being here. Um, next week, I will bring that blue um, nine patch quilt that I'm talking about. And I have no idea what is on the agenda for next week. If you have any ideas or you want to learn anything in particular on any topic in quilting, if I don't know, of course, I won't do it. But if I do know, I'd be more than happy to do it. So let me know what you want to learn because I'm more than willing to teach it. And I hope you all have a marvelous Monday and I hope you have a marvelous week. And know that I will be praying for you between now and then. Be blessed. Talk to you later, friends. Bye-bye.